we are at the Kaiku's Copper property. We are about to head down into the canyon. We think the water is low enough down there. This is our way. They built up the road so it's too steep on the other side. So we go through the culvert, down a creek bed, down a little bit of a waterfall and a rope ladder into the canyon and there's about a 400, 450 meter walk along bedrock and boulders walking through the creek to get to the showings. So once we get to here, we have this makeshift metal ladder and rope. We've got to lower ourselves down to the riverbed. Most picturesque waterfall and J2 coming down. This rope can hold something like three or four thousand pounds. It's a climbing rope. We got a ladder up there. So it's about a 10 to 15 foot drop from up there down to there. Easy to get down here. And once you get down, you are at the river in about 50 meters. We got about a 450 meter trek crossing the banks down there. So down here you can see limestone, you have sheared volcanics, limestone, sheared volcanics, limestone, sheared volcanics, limestone. All along here, this is a major fault running through this creek. This is the start of the canyon. We have to figure out a way to cross this, hike across the side over there, jump across, go down the other side, do that several more times. So let's get to her, get wet. We've determined these rocks are very slippery and the likelihood of us falling in if we have to jump across is very high. So we might as well just wade across. This is the shallowest area here, probably up to your knees. But it looks like down there the water's still a bit higher, so we're gonna get wet down there anyway. Yeah! Let's do this! So this is interesting here. We are 400 meters away from any of the showings that we found before. And this rock here, I don't know if it's bedrock, it might actually be part of bedrock. Looks like there's limestone over here too. And there. But there is mineralization all along here. This is copper sulfides, calcopyrite, some magnetite in there. You can see how steep the walls are there. Why we had to come down that creek. Easiest spot. Same with this side here. So up top here, there's a flat area 60 meters above the water level. And you could actually drill if you wanted from there to the showings and this goes all the way across the top. You have to hike down a steep area to get there, but originally when they found these, they were going to build a road, um, so it can be done. But this is the way we're taking today. we got to jump in here, up there, cross there, go down to where that log is, and uh, it's another 100 meters to get to the showings. This is kind of the first area on this side. You see a little mineralization, and then... Over here, you can see some right there, and this whole area going all the way down. There's a little gap, and then you can see the very rusty area down there. Lots of oxidation. That is one of the main areas. This is called Zone A, then there's Zone B, 
and then there's a couple other ones down farther and there's one actually set back up on the mountainside that was reportedly found in the 70s although I haven't been up there yet so this is zone A all the way from here all the way over to this area right here and we have actually checked this out before the water's a little deep over there it might be over our waist but um, we'll try and get there anyway all these right here are giant boulders with calcopyrite and magnetite and scarn I'll actually take a look at this one and show you you can see the big band through the center of malachite that one right there behind it as well this right here in 2018 when we came here this area looked a lot different 2019 we had a whole bunch of boulders move and it actually exposed scarn on this side of the bank of the river and a massive calcopyrite area in bedrock that's four meters wide by three meters you can see the scarn all across here this was previously not exposed see the magnetite scar and bedrock there scar and bedrock here that's a boulder giant boulder here with massive sulfides same with down there scar and bedrock scar and bedrock along there that's what I mean by massive sulfides As you can see here, massive pyrite, couple pyrite, magnetite, all here. More there. We're going to take a sample of this. This is the massive sulfide chunk I was telling you about. Four meters from underneath the water level over there. So here, this is all magnetite here. This is all calcopyrite. Same with this. All throughout here. Massive sulfides. Right off of here. Massive calcopyrite, pyrite, and magnetite. I just broke this chunk off right here. You want to take a look at this. Beautiful stuff. Let's get some more samples. So I'm working along here. I'm doing a representative surface chip sample all across here. For anything that's exposed, it's going to be about three meters. This is all magnetite with uh, calcopyrite, a little bit of pyrite. Up along in here, it's all massive calcopyrite, as you can see. This is a typical sample you're pulling off there. So we're going to get a few larger chip samples. We'll get a few grab samples from outcrops and then we're also going to sample a few of the float boulders. There's a whole horde of them down below this outcrop around the bank. Just to show you, here's a magnet. As you can see, magnetic, magnetic pieces I pulled off from right here. Massive calico pyrite.
some of the samples we pulled out from here, here. There's a little bit more magnetite along in here. All this in the side, all this down in here is all mostly calcopyrite. Another couple of samples we hammered out of there. So I've done a representative surface chip along this, all the way up along here, up to the top part there, it's as far as I can reach with a hammer. And then around the side here. So, it's about a five meter chip sample. I've got one, two, three, five bags for that one, some grabs. J2's got samples from this. He's around the corner, because there's more exposed around the corner and there's tons of float rocks that uh, come from outcrop obviously in this area but um, yeah we'll show a few more samples I'm gonna go down there and we'll take a look at that and then I'm gonna take a chip sample across here and then across down there so we should have five or six chip samples when we're done this and we can get an average grade across the surface from over here, here, up here, there, around the corner. And we'll get a surface representative sample from here. So I'm over here now. All this going over to there is all part of the showing. All up there as well. You can see Scarn, standing on Scarn that's mineralized here. Scarn with limestone, Scarn, 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 Scarn. Some of the float boulders. Massive magnetite, massive calcopyrite, massive calcopyrite, magnetite and calcopyrite. All over here, these boulders are mineralized for sure. So we're going to take a few more float samples. We're gonna take a couple more grab samples on the way out, but we got enough samples from three of the main areas. You can just see the immense amount of massive sulfide boulders all over the place. This is all scarring right here with mineralization. There's a three meter wide boulder over there I took a chip sample across the whole thing as well. That right there is a big boulder that fell off the outcrop and that is all mineralized scarn. Same with that over there. We are almost back to where the creek is. So this is interesting here. Another float sample with massive magnetite found right here. This is right at the entrance to where we go up. We found a piece of bedrock over there that's mineralized and another couple float samples so 
we're gonna take those with us so I'm up now just got to hike up the side creek 100 meters or two J2 is coming up right now it's amazing how much harder it is when you got 50 pounds of rocks on your back For more information about Cremody Resources Mineral Properties, visit www.cremodiresources.com.